Hey everyone, Michael here from Xano. In this tutorial, I'm gonna go over um, how to work with external API endpoints when they have things uh, like paging. Um, so you might have encountered a external API you wanna work with that either has paging or limits and offsets. Um, and then it kind of shows you maybe what the next API URL is, but you're not sure how to continuously call um, that API to get all the data. Um, from the separate pages that you um, can call from and you want to accumulate that, right? You don't want to have to do one, pa one call um, per page, right? You want to get it all in one full swoop go. So how do we do that? Um, so for this example, you might be able to already see on my screen, but I'm going to be working with um, this Pokemon API. Uh, it's just pokeapi.co. Um, you can see right on my screen here, they have this nice try it out. Uh, just basically getting information on different Pokemon. Um, what we have here is just a straight list of all the Pokemon. You can see there are these uh, parameters limit, which limits the response to 100 different Pokemon. Um, oops, and we have this offset, uh, which means where in the list we start. So we start at uh, 201 basically, because we're offsetting by 200. You can see here in the response, we get a count. So there's a total of 1,118. So Good reason for limiting uh, how much we're getting back in the response because that is a lot of Pokemon. We can see what's next, um, the previous, and then in the results here, this is our actual different Pokemon. So I've already copied that URL in Xano, so let's just go ahead and just run that real quick. We'll notice we also get, of course, the request, um, the response headers, and then there is my result. So um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy these results as JSON, just to make it a little easier for me to work with. I'm gonna create a variable and I'm gonna use the subpath feature. So I'm gonna hit this drop, drop down in where my API response variable is. I'm just gonna hit subpath there. I'll paste that in and hit define. And now we can visually actually uh, drill down to the data that we want. Um, so here in my result, um, I could just take the results, but I want this information on uh, the count and whatnot. So I'll go ahead and say result here. And I'll go ahead, let's name this results and I'll hit save. <clears throat> so if I go here and change my response to results, what we'll see here is we'll actually just get uh, that results object where it gives us the count, the next previous, um, and now our results. And we can see we're getting 100 because of that limit. So let's say that Let's not get all 1,118 Pokemon, right? Let's say, let's start maybe, let's do the offset from 1,000 and let's grab the last uh, 118 or so. So how do we go about doing that? Um, and we'll even change the limit, let's say. So let's go ahead, I'm going to create a couple variables here. Um, this will be my offset and we'll start from 1000. I'll go ahead and save that. And then let's go ahead and create a limit. I actually don't need this in a variable. I could pretty much hard code this, as you'll see in a second. We'll say limit two. So we'll just return uh, two Pokemon at a time, really not that much, right? So you can see we'll need to iterate through this a number of times. Um, so here in my API call, if I go ahead and show you my URL, we can see that limit and offset are actually parameters. So I can actually delete this, save this, and go to this param section and set these. So the first one is limit. Let's go ahead and the value we'll say is my limit variable. I'll update that. And now here uh, in my offset, we'll go ahead, oops, the path actually is always going to be text. Um, this is the physical name of that parameter offset. The value here, I've confused myself already, um, is going to be the variable offset. So um, just be careful with that distinction. The path is basically that key name of the parameter. The value is what you want to be dynamic. Uh, so, and we could also hard code those values in if we wanted to, but let's go ahead and run this now. We'll just get, as you can see, two Pokemon back. Okay, we can see uh, the offset is 1,000, so 
I don't know, recognize these names here, but um, you get the picture here. So how do we accumulate, let's just say, a list of names of the last uh, 118 or so? So we'll actually need to use a while loop in order uh, to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and go to data manipulation. And let's go to loops. And I'll do a while loop. And we're going to go ahead and set this to true equals true. And you want to be very careful with while loops that you don't create an infinite loop. So it's very crucial that you have the correct logic for breaking out of this loop. OK. So we'll go ahead and put that in there. And I'm going to go ahead. Let's hide this one more time. I just want to run this because I just remember, want to remember what this is called, the count. So our conditional will basically be um, when this count equals null. Um, and the only reason I know that is because I've actually already um, seen this. I can set this, let's say I set this to 117 real quick. You'll just want to find out what that last count will be equal to. Sometimes it's blank or not there. In this case, um, I'm sorry, we want the next. Next will be null. Uh, so we want to find, we want to stop this loop when next is equal to null, basically. So find out that la what that last page looks like if next just isn't there, doesn't exist, or equals null. So we can go ahead and in here, go to data manipulation, go to conditional. And we'll actually define here where uh, results dot next is equal to null. Okay, let's save that. So if results.next equals null, then we'll go to data manipulation, loops, and we'll break out of the loop. We'll just do a loop break there. Okay, let's go ahead. I'm going to drag this API call underneath this while loop and above this conditional. And then also these results. Um, okay, great. So the next important thing to do is each iteration of this loop, we want to be able to update the offset. Let's set this back to uh, 1,000. So we're going to start, start from there. So we want to be able to update the offset variable each time in here. Because remember, the offset is the parameter now in our API call. So we want to be updating this each time. So down here, um, after the conditional but still in the while loop, I'll do data manipulation. I'll do update variable. And we'll go ahead and update the offset by itself. And we'll go ahead and add. And the reason I put uh, limit in as a variable is just so it'd be easier just to change the limit one time. I wouldn't have to do it both in the API call and down here in the update variable. Um, but let's go ahead and add the value of the limit each time. So each time, basically, the offset will be updated by two. And then we'll pull two more Pokemon, et cetera, et cetera. OK, so that'll run us through the loop until the results.next is equal to null. Um, but we want to actually gather this data. We want to gather all uh, 118 of the last Pokemon. So I'm going to go ahead and create another variable. And we'll call this uh, list of names. And I'm going to establish basically an empty array right here. OK. And this will give us access to update this variable um, each time. Go to data manipulation, update variable. And I'll do list of names by list of names. And then I'm going to add a filter here. And I'm going to actually merge. And we have our results variable. And I believe our dot notation, we actually need to do results uh, dot name because it's nested in that results array. So I can just quickly double check that and show you over here. So see, we have so result is basically what's being returned here in Xano. And then we have this results array. And then in there uh, is each name. So that'll just give us a straight list of all the names. Um, 
I think we're ready to run that. So let's go ahead and return our list of names. Let's go to run and debug. And if we run this, um, I believe this will actually iterate through, let's see, uh, 59 times. So maybe pick a larger limit so you're not looping through as many times if you're going to try this out. But as you can see, uh, here is my list of all those last Pokemon. So I don't recognize any of uh, these names or actually I do. I just don't know what this stuff on the end means. Um, great. But let's say, what if I want to get the names of the ones that I actually recognize, right? Um, those are probably the first ones, right? So we can actually go ahead and switch this up. Let's go ahead and change the offset to, we'll say zero. I'll just go ahead and save that. And then let's do the limit. Let's do it at five here. And now instead of uh, results.next equals null, if I just want to limit to, let's say, the first 25, I can actually, in this conditional, let's say that the offset, if it is greater than or equal to, we'll say 25, uh, then we'll actually go ahead and break the loop. OK, so let's try that. And we should get maybe those first 25 Pokemon, if you ever played that. Uh, there we have Bulbasaur, Charmander, Charizard, Squirtle, um, Pikachu's down here. So uh, we're able to actually get um, a different part of that list, but still limit how much we're getting back while iterating through uh, that API call uh, multiple times while the conditions are met are true. Um, so there you have it. I hope that's helpful. That's working with uh, paging in external API calls. Um, gathering the list in a nice uh, format that you might want. Of course, you can also go about adding records to your database if you need to or manipulating it um, first before maybe you need to push it to uh, your front end. So um, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. Once again, I use pokeyapi.co. Um, if you found it helpful, please go ahead, like this video and subscribe to our channel. It just helps people who might be looking for this sort of thing uh, use it as well. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the next one.